Well, hello everybody and welcome to this episode of G Bear's Missing in Action Homestead. Yeah, I've been off the air for a couple of days. Well, there's a reason for that. Heat, humidity, and then in the afternoons, high winds. And nothing is going right for the weather. Right now the winds are blowing. Oh, I would say probably about 18 to 20 miles per hour. And uh, I wanted to get a little episode in here about wind turbines. And I had a uh, question from Glenn about uh, wire connections. And let me see if I can get back far enough here without falling down. Okay, now. You see the wires on the top of the turbine going down through the, um, let's see, where's my finger? Yeah, I'm on Zoom, so you can't use my finger. So anyway, the wires go down through the mast or the post, and they come, they come off the back of the alternator, which is a permanent magnet alternator. Don't be confused. It looks like an alternator from a car, but it's not. The ones in cars that do not have permanent magnets in them and uh, they use extra electricity because they need electricity to make electricity. But uh, this is a permanent magnet alternator um, and it does produce electricity through the magnets going uh, past the uh, wire fields. And this is called an alternator because it's three phase. It's got three wires coming out of it, all the same color. Now, each one of those wires is an output wire. There's no return wires on these. So you got three output wires. Now, when I connected them up there, I used 10 gauge wire because I only come down the pole and then go through along the cabin and into the battery room. So the pole is 21 feet and uh, I've got two sets of guy wires on it one up high and one down midway to try to keep the pole from uh, hula dancing. Okay, so the, on those connections up there, he, uh, Glenn wanted to know how I made those connections. Well, let me zoom back out here and uh, get back to regular camera because I have this little paper here and I made, what I did was I made these little connectors you can use a brass rod or aluminum rod, but if you use aluminum and you're using copper wire, you want to use a uh, um, uh, Noah locks. It's a, uh, it's like it looks like a, a dark gr gray grease, and that keeps uh, electrolysis from setting up. Now you got dissimilar metals, but you can use a brass rod, and as you can see, I used a half inch. Uh, rod and I drilled a 3 16 hole through the center of it. It's an inch and a half long so I can put in three quarters of an inch of wire on each side. And then I use uh, two quarter by 20 set screws. I drilled those down and uh, uh, tapped them with a uh, tap and die set and then yeah, I could tighten those set screws up. So when I set the wires into those and, and lo lock them down nice and tight, then I slid a piece of um, shrink tube over the whole fitting and shrunk it down. And then I think you could probably see, if I zoom in, you can see one up there, okay? So what I did also was I made sure that when I um, put those wires in, that I uh, offset them a little bit in length so they weren't right beside each other, always banging each other. Now some people are worried that, well, those wires going down inside that tube are going to twist up if you do that. No. If you notice that the turbine is not spinning around in a circle, it's, uh, it's not spinning around in a circle this way, it's holding steady towards the wind. If the wind jet direction changes, it moves a little bit. It doesn't go around and around and around in a circle, so it doesn't twist up the wire. Okay, and it, if it does get a twist going on the wire because of turbulent winds, 
Uh, as soon as the winds stop, the twist on the wire will make it untwist. Okay? So don't worry about that. But this is the best type of connection that you would want on a turbine, is a direct connection coming off the back of the permanent magnet alternator. Now, you remember I said, things I wish I knew before I went off grid, okay? First of all, if you go back to my early videos on turbines when I was out here, I had a Chinese made turbine up there. They said it was something like a 600 watt turbine or something like that. That thing never put out more than maybe 20 watts. And then it quit working all together. And when I took it down and pulled it apart, the whole inside was just fried. Piece of junk. And one of the things that, one of the major problems with that, and there's something that, again, I wish I knew before I went off grid. Do not, do not buy turbines or, or PMAs or PMGs with slip ring technology on them. And what a slip ring is, is uh, at the base of the turbine, it's got um, these three brass rings and three brass uh, or three carbon brushes that run on those. So your power goes through the brushes, through the brass, so it can spin around kind of like a, an electric motor and still make contact no matter which directions it's in without twisting wires or anything like that. Okay, why do I say don't use them? Well, for one, they do not work very well in cold climates. They do not work well in dirt and dusty climates. In cold climates, the carbon brushes will freeze and they will crack and they'll fall apart. And then once you break one contact on a, um, an alternator, on a PMA, you break one contact on there while it's under pressure and that will cause it to burn out the stator. Yes, we don't want that. Not good. So stay away from slip ring type um, contacts in your PMA or your PMG, either one. You don't want slip ring ever. Um, direct wiring like I have it is the best. Now what I did was down at the bottom, uh, about uh, four feet up on the post, I had drilled a hole in there to bring the wires out. And before I set this thing up, I dropped a, a string down with a, a small weight on the end of it that was big and small enough to fit through the hole I drilled in the side of the pipe. And then I looked in the hole of the pipe and I saw the string there. So I reached in with a little wire hook and pulled that out of there. And then I tied my wires onto that and pulled them back up through. Okay, so originally, I had an electrical box at the bottom of the, um, the mast or the pole and I was going to um, put a cover on there, run conduit down and all of that. But then I found uh, a situation where originally I had it, uh, the concrete uh, pole going right into the concrete and that's not good because sometimes you have to take these things down to work on them. So I, I fabricated this little uh, rig here with that heavy-duty hinge and then three bolts bolt the plate the, the round plate to the concrete and then on this side I've got this uh, metal L brake uh, bracket with a wing nut and I can take the wing nut off and then I can lower this pole down in that direction so I can work on the turbine and do a maintenance as I need to do it. And instead of having to try to work up that pole all the way up there, which is a little precarious. And when you're working on that, you have to tie that, uh, the blades off. And I had a, a setup where I would rig the, the rope onto one of the blades, then go around the pole, all with slip knots. And then I would hang the rope down here and I would set up a scaffolding unit right up here against the side of it and get up on top of the scaffolding so I could work on the turbine. Kind of a pain in the neck. A lot of work for nothing. When it's easier to disconnect 
one, two guy wires from that side and then lower this whole thing down. And eventually, I'm gonna put a winch, an electric winch, mounted on the top of the cabin right here, right about where that light is. I'll move the light over a little ways and I'll have an electric winch right there and a switch on the inside where I can um, sh keep the power shut off on it so uh, people come in uh, when I'm not, not around can't use the winch to lower my turbine down. And if you try to lower this thing down by hand, you're going to find out how heavy that thing is and it will get away from you. And if the winds come up, it will get away from you. We had the small one up there and I had Andy helping me and we were lowering the thing down as slow as we could with ropes and it just once it got to about a 60 degree lean like this it just was not able to, we weren't able to hold on to it so it came all the way down it hit the ground broke a few of the blades but uh, I wasn't too concerned with that because that one was coming off anyway because it wasn't working and then later I found that the uh, the PMA that was supposed to be in there was just totally fried and the magnets uh, were dead they so they weren't proper uh, PMAs they were probably standard magnets uh, put together in that and that's what the Chinese do they lie to you so you got to be careful what you buy uh, from China uh, anybody who wants to know where I bought my turbine and, and turbine equipment uh, leave a message down below in the uh, comment section and I'll see if I can't uh, post that for you I'll send you uh, in the answer I'll send you a link to the, um, the the company I bought the the KT5 from and uh, one thing I would suggest is this is the standard 1685 watt uh, KT5 and another thing I wish I knew is always go with the highest output you can find. And they have one that's called a uh, dual, um, which has two, a double sized uh, alternator. Now I can buy that uh, for about 400 bucks and change this one out, meaning I'd have to lower it down and, and take this, this alternator off and put the other one on. And I probably will do that down the line because it's got a, about a 30% higher output, which means more production, more electricity. And that's what you want. You want the best you can get. Because something I learned after moving off grid was whatever your turbine is rated as, you will have what they call the maximum wattage output. And they rate them at that. That's the most that thing will ever put out. It can't put out any more than that. And then, if you look at it, it'll say it's good for winds up to 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 miles per hour. Okay, the KT5 is rated for 90 miles per hour, but it's also rated for 1,685 watts. So, here's what I didn't know when I got started in this. What that means is in order for this turbine to put out 1,685 watts, there's got to be a 90 mile an hour wind. <laughs> and guess what? There's a 90 mile an hour wind and that turbine isn't going to be up there. It's, that's a hurricane force winds. That thing is probably going to come down. It'll probably snap the guy wires. So you want to uh, make sure now you get the highest output you can in the lowest wind as possible. So the, uh, the dual that I'm talking about that goes on here is a much better system. It, it produces at lower um, speeds, it produces a lot more electricity, 30% more electricity. So that's a, that's a good thing. All right, everybody. That's what I have for today. Questions and comments below. Thank you for joining me. Don't forget, thumbs up down there. Don't forget, subscribes down there. Don't forget, shares down there and saves. All that stuff down there at the bottom. That's all good stuff. Thank you for joining me. This is G-Bear signing off.